Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw, Editorial Director at TigerFitness.com. Q&A today, I got four questions for this Q&A. And if you guys have any questions or comments, before I get started, if you guys have any questions or comments that you'd like me to answer in a Q&A, there is a link below to a forum thread at Tiger Fitness. You have to post your questions there. You post them there, I answer every question posted. The best questions I'm gonna turn into a Q&A video like this. Initially, I was just going to do a Q&A Saturday, but I'm getting so many Q&A questions that I'm switching the majority of my videos on my channel to straight Q&A. So, if you have a question, hit that Q&A link, post it up. Now, if I answer your question in a video, you, you can email me, and my email link is below. You can email me if you'd like a free copy of my book, Massive Iron. I'll send that to you, no questions asked. So, let's get started. First question today is from Ashley. And for those of you guys curious, this is an Anderson Powerlifting t-shirt that I got at my last meet and a Savage Fitness hat. Savage Fitness guys are local. They hooked me up with this trucker hat. I think it looks good on the big, hairy, ugly dude. So I wear it. So anyway, in case you're wondering what the swag is, am I allowed to say swag at the age of 47? I don't know, kids. All right, first question is from Ashley. Ashley says he's progressing well on a full body workout at the moment. Um, hope you don't mind, but I have two questions. I usually train in the morning, but last night I trained at night. Would it be okay to train Wednesday morning? So Ashley's doing a full body workout. He trained Monday night, and now he's wondering if it's okay to train Wednesday morning. I'm gonna go ahead and address that right out of the gate, absolutely. On a full body workout, you don't need to stick straight to 48 strict hours of recovery. One of the main reasons to train using a full body workout or frequency training is that there's a lot of research, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there is research that shows that after 48 to 72 hours, muscle protein synthesis levels return to baseline. What this means for you guys is that, you know, if you work out sooner than 48 hours after your last workout, you know, you're, you're still perfectly fine. If you didn't work out for, if you're doing a full body workout after 72 hours, muscle protein synthesis levels have returned to baseline. So, you know, you could say you're losing gains theoretically, but if you train sooner than that 48 to 72 hour window, you're, you're absolutely fine. Just keep a focus, you know, keep an eye on muscle recovery. If you feel good, um, you know, just, you know, rock on. I mean, Lift when you feel like you can lift. I I vary my workout times based on when I have the most energy. Like during the week, I do it immediately after I get home from work. On the weekends, I usually get up and write a little bit. And then I usually lift about noon. So I vary my times. I don't really obsess about it. Just do what works for you. Do what works best for your motivation. Do what works best for your lifestyle. As long as you're doing a full body workout, as long as you're lifting about less than 72 hours or you know, you know about 72 hours or less than your previous workout you're pretty safe now ashley has a second question question two last week i was sick and missed a tuesday workout i was training sunday tuesday thursday so he was doing a full body where he'd work out sunday off tuesday off thursday um i was only on the one day, but et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 repeat the cycle. He wants to know, would it be best to repeat the cycle or just continue my program on Wednesday and Friday? Um, look, when I'm doing full body or frequency type of work, if I miss a day, like I miss a training, a specific training day, the next time I come into the gym, I'll do that workout, even if it's on a different day. Um, then, then whatever. So if you're training Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and let's say you 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 miss your Tuesday workout, but you're able to work out on Wednesday, yeah, do your Tuesday workout on Wednesday. Whatever works. Just stick with the flow. Frequency works really good with this. Bro splits or body part splits don't because you miss a workout, and then all of a sudden you got to recycle everything. You got to reshuffle everything, and um, 
you know, you, you're stretching workouts out into nine, maybe eight, nine, ten days since you worked that body part last. So frequency training, absolutely. When I miss a day, I come back into the gym and just do the workout I missed, and then I continue with that cycle. And then you can either, you know, instead of taking two days off where you normally take two days off, you could just take one day off and get back on your normal schedule if you lift on specific days because of work or family requirements or whatever. So Ashley, I hope that helps. All right, guys, second question is from D Paradise 81 says let me get some uh, let me get something to drink here I'm lifting a little bit and drinking some BCAA sometimes I just drink them toss them in water for something with a little flavor I don't want anything heavy before I lift so that's that's what I'm drinking right there um, Paradise 81 says for ab work what are your progression guidelines most of your programs list them as rep ranges how would you progress using the ab wheel once the higher end of the rep ranges are met for all sets? Very good question. Ab wheel rollouts, if you get really good at ab wheel rollouts. So he's basically asking, once I can do like three sets or two sets of 10 to 15 on ab wheel, ab wheel rollouts, how do I make them more challenging? How do I progress? You have a couple options here. Number one, you could get a weight belt, some kind of a weight belt that allows for um, maybe up to 75, maybe even 100 pounds of weight additions. Those belts are out there. I haven't looked at them in quite a while. I'm sure they aren't cheap, but that is one option if you have the extra spending cash and you really want to, you know, add the extra weight. You can use them. You can use a. a a uh, jacket like this, a weight vest like this um, for ab wheel rollouts, for pull-ups, for dips. You can also just get a cheap backpack and put weight in the backpack um, if you want for ab wheel rollouts. That works as well and probably a cheaper option. Now, you can also make ab wheel rollouts more challenging by doing pauses at the extended position. So when you're at the extended position, you can pause one to five seconds before you roll back. So it's like a static hold. You can make ab, ab wheel rollouts more challenging in that manner. Now, if you can do like five second pauses on your ten to fit on each of the ten to fifteen reps, and you want to make it more challenging, you can do standing ab wheel rollouts. I believe Chris Duffin, powerlifter Chris Duffin, does these. Um, search YouTube, Chris Duffin, ab wheel rollouts. You can do standing ab wheel rollouts where you're standing and the wheel is down below and you roll all the way out. If you can do those and those become too easy, do those rest pause style, etc. That's about the most challenging you can get. And if, hey, if those get super challenging, add a weight vest. If you can do standing ab wheel rollouts with five second pauses using 75 to 100 pounds in your backpack, and if you can do those for three sets of 10 to 15, you really don't need to progress anymore. So I've never seen anybody able to do those, but that would be my progression uh, advice for ab wheel rollout. So I hope that helped. All right, next question is from Nick Clark. Let me get another sip here. All this talking dries out my throat and my lips. I gotta keep my lips luscious for my girlfriend. Nick Clark says, Hi Steve. I believe I may have asked a similar question like this before, but I would like to know what your take is on the people who say that beginner workout routines should be comprised of only a few lifts each workout. For example, squat, bench, row, three days a week. So Nick is asking about the people that kind of push the notion that you should, as a beginner, only do starting strength type workouts, strong lift type workouts, minimalist star type workouts with only, you know, say three, four, five exercises per day. What are my thoughts on that? He goes on to say, I like the look of your huge gainer workout, but notice the larger amount of volume, etc. Um, is this optimal for a beginner? My workouts typically don't have more than 20 sets per day. 
Now, if you look at something like starting strength, it's probably pretty close. Uh, a lot of my workouts have 16 to 20 sets per day on full bodies. If you look at starting strength, it's probably pretty similar. Strong lifts, I haven't looked at in a while. It's probably pretty similar, etc. So the volume of sets really isn't that different. I just am not doing five by fives. I don't like five by fives particularly. I just find them boring. So it's not what I program. I'm not saying they're ineffective, etc. Now regarding minimalist workouts, let's address that issue for a second. I don't, I don't um, subscribe to the school of thought that says that minimalist is best for beginners. Now, a lot of these programs like Star, uh, Star, you know, the Star Five by Fives, and uh, Strong Lifts and Starting Strength, they're very good base building routines. If you want to run them, you know, go right ahead. Obviously, Starting Strength is a strength focused routine. I like my philosophy on training is build as much work let me let me start over my philosophy on training is make every muscle group from head to toe as big and as strong as possible so i like a more well-rounded program i like to see you hit everything from calves to uh, hamstrings etc now i use the same amount of volume that most of these other guys use in their beginner type of programs I just stick to about three sets per exercise. I want to see you make every muscle group from head to toe as big and as strong as humanly possible. So I use a little bit more exercise variation, but my exercises are primarily compound movements and variations that use easy bar curls, um, lying skull crushers, etc. that use the easy bar. So. I want to see you build a broader base. I want to see you make every muscle group from head to toe as big and as strong as, po as possible. I'm a power builder. That's my philosophy. That's what I am all about. I see no downsides with this. Now, my workouts aren't specifically designed to, aren't specifically for the strength athlete per se. They're a power building type of approach. I want to see you build as much muscle as possible so you can build a lot more strength down the road. I want to see as much, you know, focus on progression and strength building as possible so you can build as much muscle. There is a synergy there and that is what I push. The program strong lifts, the program starting strength, they're, you know, starting strength is more about building a strength base and it's very good at what it does. Star is very similar, obviously, because they're, they're, they're brother type programs. They're in the same family. Strong lifts, I'm not a big fan of. Um, and that's a topic for another video. But, but look, um, you know, people that say you need to do, the, the heart of this question is people say you need to do minimalist programs as a beginner. No, that's, that's, I don't prescribe, I don't subscribe to that school of thought. I don't believe in it. Um, I've, look, I've done hundreds and hundreds of transformation stories. I've I've uh, interviewed hundreds of natural bodybuilders, and none of them, you know, maybe five percent max have used a minimalistic program right out of the gate, and they still were successful. I don't believe in that. As long as you have a good focus on form, make everything from head to toe as big and as strong as possible. It's okay to use a bigger exercise variation. In fact, the lifters in the 50s and the 60s that use full body workouts, their workout routines look more like mine. So I'm not saying mine are better. Starting strength, strong lifts, whatever will serve you well if you push progression. That's just not who I am. That's just not what I'm about. And you'll be perfectly fine, Nick, using my type of program. In fact, I feel by maximizing sets using my rep goal system, you're going to build more muscle and you're going to build, build strength at a, in a safer type of manner. All right. One more question in this video. It's from Ashley. Last question from Ashley. Let me get something to drink before I get into that question. Ashley says, Dear Steve, during the past couple of weeks, I've been adding weight to my deadlift and doing 3x5 instead of 1x5. I feel my core working now during the lifts. I've never felt this before. Could this be a weak core? I've never really trained core. 
or bad workout form or is the um, the weakness he's feeling during deadlifts um, just from the volume increase. I used to deadlift three by eight, never felt my abs working like this before. Th keep up the gr good work and content. Thank you, Ashley. Now here's the thing. As you get stronger, when when your um, you know when your deadlift is is weaker, not saying you have a weak deadlift, Ashley, uh, but you said you've been adding weight to your to your deadlifts. When you're when you're weaker, you're probably not going to notice your obliques and your core um, working as much on the deadlifts. Maybe you start out with a weak lower back. You might learn. You might feel that working a bit harder. But um, as you start to build, you know, as you start to add weight to your deadlift, you're probably going to notice your core working more. You're probably going to notice your core. When I deadlift heavy, sometimes I can feel my chest. I can feel um, obviously my traps. I can feel all kinds of crazy muscle groups working hard. So the volume increase may have something to do with it, but quite honestly, I think the fact that you're getting stronger is the main reason why you can feel your core more when you deadlift. Now, with that said, I would like to see you do at least a couple sets per workout focusing on your core. I don't like spinal flexion ab work, which is where your spine is flexing, spinal flexion, like sit-ups and crunches. I want to see you do things like planks, rolling planks, ab wheel rollouts, etc. Do a couple, at least a couple sets a week just to help strengthen your core and uh, make things a little more, um, give your deadlift a little bit more support. So guys, that's it for this Q&A. If I featured your video in this Q&A, again, you can email me. The link is below. Uh, if you'd like a copy of my book, Massive Iron, I'll send it to you, no questions asked. Guys, if you want a question featured in my Q&A video, there's a Q&A link below. Post your questions in that Q&A link. I answer every question posted. The best questions I turn into videos. And guys, if you made it this far in this video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I would appreciate the support. If you want to connect with me on social, all kinds of links below from Instagram to Snapchat to Periscope. You can even watch me work out live, which I'm about to do. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.